FrontView.org article review is a chance to spotlight recent information that didn't garner enough attention from the mainstream media. Hopefully by adding a creative style to dry boring text and introducing the work of experts in the field, this deserves more of an in-depth summary and evaluation of the significance this information has to the public. V-blogging a recent article from frontview.wordpress.com. The title reads, Ear, eye, liver, windpipe, bladder, and even a heart. The list of body parts grown from stem cells is getting longer and longer. Now add it to one of the most complex organs, the brain. A team of European scientists have grown parts of a human brain and tissue culture from stem cells. Their work could help scientists understand the origins of schizophrenia or autism and lead to drugs to treat them, said Junger Noblich, Deputy Scientific Director at the Institute of Molecular Biotechnology of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. The advance could also eliminate the need for conducting experiments on animals whose brains are not perfectly modeled for humans. To grow the brain structure called organoids, the scientists use stem cells which can develop in to any other kind of cell in the body. To put the stem cells into a special solution designed to promote the growth of neural cells, bits of the gel interspread throughout the solution gave the cells a three-dimensional structure to grow upon. In eight to ten days, the cells turned into brain cells. After 20 to a month, the cells matured into a size being three or four millimeters, representing specific brain regions such as the cortex and the hindbrain. Growing brain tissue this way marks a major advancement because of the lab-grown brain cells self-organized and took on a growth pattern such seen in developing fetal brain. Currently, the organoids are limited on how big they can get because they do not have a circulatory system to move around nutrients. Noblich's team didn't stop at growing the brain organoids, though. They went a step further and used the developing tissue to study microcephaly, a condition in which the brain stops growing. My microcephalic patients are born with similar or smaller brains and impaired cognitive development. Studying microcephaly in mice doesn't help because the human and mouse brains are too different. A stem cell biologist at Riken Center Developing Biology in Kobe, Japan, garnered headlines last year by growing the precursors to a human eye. The most important advancements is they combine the self-organization culture with the disease-specific cells to model a, dis a genetic disease of human brain malformation, he said. Everything we've done with the other organs starting with this stage, said Dr. Anthony Altala, the director of the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, who has done years of research on using 3D printers to build organs. Attila was not involved in this study, but he noted that before he could build organs, he needed to grow the pieces in order to get the cells to differentiate in just the right way. So though it's unlikely anyone will, bi will print brains the same way he did a kidney, this kind of experiment is where organs regeneration starts. Noblich said the next stage or step is studying the other brain disorders, but it will take some time to grow enough brain tissue. One factor is maximizing size and how far the brain can develop in the culture. Brain cells develop in layers, and there are several by the time a baby is born. The cortical cells Noblich's team grew only had one such layer. Another factor is getting blood vessels inside the tissue. That problem could be solved sometime in the future, though he said it couldn't predict when. It is tempting to think one day there will be whole brains and vats, but that isn't likely to happen. If you like what you see and want to see more videos like this, please subscribe or follow us in frontview.org.